Who whips down on Zara at CK? I'm trying to. I don't know. That can't really have baited out of EKB. There's no way he's going to fall for that one. And there's a land, of course, with the song available. But Vici still not quite ready to move in. Now they're going to head down towards the river. But now they just. Both teams being very, very scared of each other here. No one really wanting to make the first jump. No one wanting to make oh. the net. They're waiting for each other to go. This is a big item, and it's the best item <laughs> C2Y could get right now, I think. I mean, he can burst down pretty much any here on the side of VG now, can't he? So Jaro has 2,500 health, yep. and Lina can, with two Laguna Blades, deal 1,900. 1900 so sure, yeah. if they just tickle him a little bit first, CTY can, can pull him up in one go. And they want to they wanna do something big it's here with, with Satanic. The pressure right Satanic can easily turn it around if uh, Hao gets the first Laguna Blade. In his face, he gets to Satanic and just hit two or three times. Yeah, this that could be big for e Yeah, here we go. They can find a jump here. They do have the Thunder Ghost for FBG. If they pop it, this would be a great time to do so, but they're not going to go so And here we go. They pop it now. And oh, they actually get down the Static Storm here. This might disrupt Eho's fight. But YG gets with the BKB, looking for how Trying to chase down how how gets to the catch up. He's going to be okay for the time being. They've already lost the Ruby Gear on the side of Eho. And now Lanham comes out with the song, trying to set something up. They want to get rid of this Nether Ward. RTK moving him with the punches. YJ's going to help him out as well. They'll get rid of the Nether Ward. The Ward will be dropped. But Fenrir now with the Echo Sam onto YJ. And now the refresh from Eye The second ult comes out. Two of them dead. Lanham's trying to TP himself out, but he's going to get glimpsed. Oh, I was moving it onto RTK. Find the darks here. They'll also get the Naga Siren. Triple kill for Ice Ice Sight. That refresher ult setting him up perfectly. And Ehome forced back to their base. Very nicely done there by VG. And they'll probably get the Roshan off the back of this as well. And I mean, no buybacks available at all on Ehome. The only piece of good news for Ehome there is that CTY manages to kill off the Disruptor in the end with a second Laguna Blade, but he didn't get both of them off. They, I think it was a Glimmer Cape play onto the Gyro that saved Hal there. Looked like CTY could be able to blow him up, but don't manage to execute it well enough. And this is going to be a Roshan. It's going to be most likely some aggressive warding if they have any on any of their heroes, which actually looks like they don't. It's Nobody has any wards on the Radiant right now. It's going to be the cheese here as well for the side of VG. There's a hex now onto your Pugna. Yeah. Good item pickup, of course. Especially now that BKBs run low on duration. It's a lot easier to get a hex off that is... High impact. VG, let's see if they're ready to try and go for the base push again. We saw them do about 20 minutes ago, and after that, ended badly. They haven't really been back here, but now, with the Aegis and Cheese, maybe VG, How and the gang are, are ready to go for it. And here we go. DDC, though, again with the initiation. Can they change the it? No, How's going to be okay here for the timing. Then we caked up. Now with the net thrown down, can they change the up? How are bringing him low here? Fortification will come out for the side of E Home. Ice 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 blinking forward, though. Found out the arc lining and the lightning bolt, just keeping E home back, and they'll find the tier three now. So there's no tier threes remaining for the side of E home, just their last two sets of exposed racks. And VG may be ready to move in for more. Femre, the one holding the cheese, he's got the Echo oh, I haven't got the Echo Sound, but it doesn't matter. FY setting this up onto YJ, he's been hexed up as well, but Lanham with the song is trying to stop this and may even want to turn this one around. But the Thunder God's Wrath coming out, E home on the retreat. They just can't fire into this one. They'll get rid of the missile, but the VG will just move in, start to hit away the racks. DDC again with the telekinesis, but high. Oh, the vacuum wall! Catching three BKBs being popped by Howard Super. Super luck draining the dice here. RTK won't go down. Will be able to get himself out. Pipes being popped by Ehome. They just can't really dent the armor of VG Gaming, even with a, a lovely vacuum wall. Now look at the stun onto How. What will he be able to steal here? DJ. Okay, he's got the homing missile. Ice 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 moving forward. YJ quickly low, but it pops the BKB. Now with the same time, trying to fight off. Ice Ice Ice. Turn towards Howard. That's stolen missile actually holding Howl down there. Two with the light train from the low ground. Can they kill him for the second time? There's someone missed, but there's the first Laguna Blade. How? He's going to be bombed. Oh, Fairy with the Echo Snap. Oh, he has the Vigil to two. TTY is getting low calibre. Now he has to find the leader. They might just lose that fight. No, the Glimmer Cave is going to be all right here. How? Gets himself a double kill. Fairy moving out to YJ. They get it with the light train. It's GG. He break the gauge and they break down e -Home. They win game one. That was so extremely close to being another hold from e -Home. Damn. What a, what a game of just calculations. Just both teams playing it careful. We saw VG go for the base push two times. It was unsuccessful. They held themselves back. e -Home came out. They looked for an engagement. It wasn't a good one. And then Vici, after the roast, they felt that they could go for another try at the base, and, and this time it was successful. This is very, very high quality play. Like, everyone in this game really did their job. Uh, so many, like, very small details that add up during these fights and, and make a really big difference. I think especially the support play from both teams was absolutely top tier. And uh, Vici Gaming, good for them. They got an advantage early, because judging from how close those fights were later on into the game, 
they might not have been able to do this if they didn't get the early racks, but they do get game one. Absolutely, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what comes out game two. I'm sure we'll see some uh, different play styles coming out. But for now, over to the analysts to hear what they've got to say about game one between Vici and Eho. Very much uh, ID Pixel there down on the uh, arena floor. And welcome back to the analyst desk. We have a, uh, it's a fairly regular desk right now, actually. We're back with the, uh, back with the Malinis and um, I don't know quite what we're going to call you guys yet because it's kind of weird. We've been an S and a, and a W and Sweden and Seb. It's Team S still. The better players. Better, oh, shots fired <laughs> over there. Shots fired over there. What do we make of this, uh, what do we make of this opening game, Malini? It's kind of interesting that we actually see someone try and draft against the Darks here in the Lena. That mostly teams have just been trying to take one and giving away the other. Uh, but in this game, we see the Disruptor to try and mess with him in the lane and make sure that he doesn't have a good start at all. And then the Pugna to just destroy them when they try and combo. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was pretty cool, but uh, Ehome actually seemed pretty prepared for it and itemized against it with the BKBs. Yeah, Pugna was, a, a, I think it was the last pick, wasn't it? It was, yeah. yeah. It was also working really well for them. It did so much in that game, but another hero that did a lot for them was Isaac Ice on the Zeus. He got the first blood, and in general, he was just doing wonders. I talked to Matt, and it was like, how is he so farmed? It's yeah. really rare to see someone that fat on Zeus. Yeah, what do you make of it, Winter? I think the, game, the story of this game is quite like, interesting. If you look at both of their lineups, uh, during the early phases, I think Ehome's lineup is a little weaker during the early phases against what uh, what the Radiant have, uh, because they have more burst damage, they have more with the Zeus and the Pugna. But there are certain situations that they were forced to take a fight without BKB. They were forcing a fight, so they were losing at the start. And then it came to a midpoint of the game where Ehome had their BKBs. So that's the point of when they are stronger. And they started to win back some team fights. They yeah. got Roshan. And then it went towards the late game where the window went back towards the spell casting team because the BKBs are going down to five seconds. So it's a very interesting shift in the momentum during the game because yeah, of the BKBs. Yeah, I mean, it seemed relatively straight relatively even up to about 25 26 minutes which is about when you said you know it started to change for e-home and then they kind of lost their way a little bit and, and vg sort of sowed a bit of class yeah. came back into it again why do you think it went away from e-home that way from the mid game i think it's just like what i mentioned the power spike of when your bkb goes down to five seconds and you kind of want to get a refresher but you don't have time for that and you get forced to defend your base and you just have to take the fight without having enough items and you have only five second BKB. Yep. And you get kited around and the spell is going to kill you after your BKB runs out. Except they were sort of feeling each other out a lot, even though they know each other well and they've played a lot together and against each other in the past. But they seem to be sort of standoffish a little bit, almost classic old school Chinese farming and you know, just waiting for the right moment. I mean, I think we waited something like 20 minutes towards the end before they actually decided that they were going to fight. I felt like uh, the fact that Erotiki had such a bad game on Darkseer, not like his performance, just the fact that he got a tough laning phase and yeah. he was really poor in that game, it was a big problem for Ehom. They just couldn't get the fights they wanted to get. Uh, Darkseer is made, like, the biggest factor. You know, we've, we've been saying Ehom, they always have team fight, but they always have Darkseer. You know, it's pretty much down to the Darkseer. And they do have a lot of, like Loda mentioned before when he was here, they do have a lot of spells to follow up with the Darkseer initiation, but it never came because the dagger was so late. It was such a late dagger. Maybe he should have went mech dagger instead of going for the Greaves. I felt like they needed someone to actually go in because you don't fight to Pugna. You gotta open the fight and go on them. If you don't, they're just gonna burst you down. They're gonna slowly harass you until you actually can't fight them. Yeah, I actually agree with Seb a lot. The, the Greaves doesn't feel like it was worth it this game because it was mostly spell damage. Mm. Okay, moving forward, looking forward to the next game. Uh, what do we home do now? Do we do we see the Darkseer banned out this time? Is that is that going to help either team? They should grab it again if they can. I think uh, I don't think it was a problem. Just maybe adjusted a bit more. And you, you know when the description of Ehom is actually like Feast of I mean offlane, and in that case he really was he got nothing. So maybe they should give him a bit more space, tag for him a bit, or just gank on his lane. Yeah. Because that was Darkseer. Darkseer was too poor. Mm. He was, and I, I agree with what you were on to. Maybe a different item build could have worked. He needed a blink BKB pretty much to go into the fight. That's what they needed in that game. Glimmer Cape also saved so many people. Definitely. Yeah, players are on their way out to the arena uh, to rejoin uh, the uh, pods that they have waiting for them as they come out now. And we will get this game back underway very shortly. ROTK looking yeah, pretty cool, pretty relaxed. And that man's always relaxed. Look at him. He leads his team out back towards the pods. Vici Gaming will go head to head with Ehome in game two with a game in hand. Just one game away from reaching the top four. They've been here before, of course, plenty of experience in that team. 
fun fact about Ice 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 is that he will never play with his socks on because he doesn't feel comfortable or at home. So it makes him more relaxed. Would not like to be in that booth right now. <laughs> They're air conditioning, you know. <laughs> There's some air fresheners in there as well. So they'll get themselves settled. We're already settled, which means we can continue to talk about this, uh, this matchup and uh, figure out where it might go. Do we feel like Vici got the upper hand in the first game, obviously, and now they've got the mental upper hand as well? Does that not just add, to, sort of, you know, take them 2-0 and clean this one up and say goodbye to Ehome? Or have they got a little bit more fight in them, do you think? Oh, I think Ehome has a lot of fight in them. They did, after all, 2-0 against Secret, which was an impressive performance. Mm. So I think they can bring it back. It's just... As was mentioned, RTK needs to have a good game. So maybe if they can make early rotations that help him there or just set up the lanes in a way that benefits him, uh, I believe they can play off the back of him. Okay. What about you two guys? What do you, what do you think? I really like having a pressure lane in the off lane. Again, we, they've been sacking RTK a lot, and we saw a lot of success with like the solo off lane Darkseer from Zai. But at the same time, if you have like Darkseer plus one, like Spirit Breaker, we've seen a decent amount on dying. If they can get their hands on it, I think they can go a long way to uh, making sure that their carry is much stronger than opponent's carry. Okay, Winter? Uh, I think E-Home, this game has to expect that Vichy are going to draft more towards a mix of spell damage and okay. physical damage, which was what happened the last game. So it actually, it's going to be a problem where if you're fighting a lot and your BKBs go down, you have to have another answer to that. Yeah, we've, um, we've not seen a huge amount of pocket strats, but we, there's been like the odd hero here or there that they've kind of I pulled mean, out of nowhere. So do, do we expect that in game two? I mean, we were talking about like Lina getting more attention. Yes. And I like the fact that Vici actually showed that against Lina, we want to have the Nether Ward, which is yeah. the Pugna, which Sebastian and I agreed it was a really good way of dealing with the Lina. Yeah, uh, the Luna as well. Um, not only picked once in the group stages, and then suddenly seven times in three days. Just Luna. seems to have caught on. Luna always comes back at TI. It's, it's <laughs> always been like this. You know, suddenly, suddenly they start picking Luna, they start winning with it, and then it starts being a thing. Yeah. But she's weak if you have to go BKB that early. And we've seen, like, Visage own her earlier today. This game was Zeus. So she does have their weaknesses, and teams are picking up.